That sounds like a NAF superhero name or something. I am the mountain chicken. Lots of animals have pretty easy to understand names. Take the tree frog, name that because it's a frog that lives in a tree. Or the burrowing owl, which is an owl that burrows. Or even the free toed sloth, which is a sloth that has, well, you guessed it, free toes. However, not all animals have names this obvious. In fact, there are plenty of critters out there that have names that in no way, shape or form represent what this creature actually is like. In fact, there are many animals that are named after other animals they have nothing to do with. So let's check out some of these beasts that have the wrong animals in their name. Let's start with one of the most beloved animals people keep as pets guinea pigs. Both parts of this name are a complete lie. First, they're not really from Guinea, and they aren't actually pigs. They actually come from South America, being found in countries like Peru, Chile, and Ecuador, and they're more closely related to mice and other rodents than actual pigs, which sucks because I love pigs, as I've said many times before. If I could have like a little pig as a pet, that'd be amazing, like an actual pig, not a guinea pig. Like, I want just a proper pig, but like, Yay big, that just runs around and does things. Someone, someone make one of those for me please, that'd be great, thanks. The pig part of their name comes from the fact that they look somewhat like pigs, at least to English speakers anyway, and I can see that I suppose. They are similar in shape and they have like those little stubby noses to a degree, like actual pigs, but the guinea part of this name needs a tad more explaining. Guinea actually originates as a location name from Africa, housing the modern countries like Guinea and, well, Equatorial Guinea. The term of Guinea came to be used across the globe thanks to the British Empire. It kind of became a synonym for somewhere foreign, different and mysterious, and that's partially the reason we have the island of New Guinea, which houses the nation of Papua New Guinea, but that's, that's a slight tangent. The reason these quote-unquote pigs got referred to as being from Guinea is because they came to the UK from the faraway land of South America, which was suitably Guinea for the Brits at the time. But I also read they got this name because in the UK they were sold for one whole guinea, which was part of Britain's dumb old money system. I think a guinea I checked was worth one pound five p. It was like a, a pound and a shilling. I'm not sure. You know that that money was dumb. No wonder we changed it. Yeah, like pounds just makes a bit more sense, doesn't it, than that strange money. As well as loving pigs, I also love birds, and a bird with a very misleading name is the turtle dove. As much as I love the idea of a half bird, half turtle hybrid, this animal isn't that, which sucks. Like, give me a turtle with wings, do it nature, like I, I dare you. It, this is just a regular old bird, however, and it's a type of dove to be exact. So only one half of this name is misleading as opposed to the whole thing. The turtle part of this name has nothing to do with the fact that these birds look like turtles, because honestly, they don't in any way, shape or form. It is instead a corruption of an old word, that being the Latin term of tertur. This was the Latin onomatopoeic word for the sound this bird makes. And this makes sense, but I should say it like, and I, I can see that, that sounds very much like the kind of sound a pigeon dove makes. So it was a dove that went ta -ta -ta, so it became a ta -ta -ta dove, and then it got corrupted into turtle dove. I swear I spend most of these videos, Amber, on camera just making silly animal sounds, like I've, I, I've chosen the wrong career path, I should be doing professional animal sounds for a living. Before we continue, I want to say a huge thank to my most recent patrons. Say thank you to the new patrons Noreen23505, John Wick and Alex Lindsay. And I, I hope that's the real John Wick. Thank you, Mr. Wick, for supporting me on Patreon. I didn't know you were so into etymology, gun violence and etymology. Who would have thought? But anyway, Patreon is the best way to financially support Name Explain. And donating just $1 a month gets you ad-free videos, a chance to say what names get explained, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of all these videos. All of that can be found at patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below. Conversely, if you want to just make a one-time donation, you can leave a super thanks directly in the comments section of any of my videos here on YouTube. They help out tremendously too. Thank you. Anyway, let's continue with the mountain chicken. And if you haven't guessed, this isn't a chicken. It is instead a type of frog, of all things. Who, who would have thought? But these frogs are now only found on the Caribbean islands of Dominica and Montserrat. These frogs are pretty big 
guys. And it's believed to be that's where their name came from, as they are a similar size to a chicken. However, there is another theory. That theory being that they have this name because they actually taste somewhat like chicken. This might sound odd, but a lot of things out there do taste like chicken, and non-normal mountain chicken frogs taste like chicken too. Have you ever, have you ever eaten frog? Like, it's really tasty. I've had frog's legs before when I've been in France, and they're, they're decent. I'm normally vegetarian, but I can't resist the curious meat. Yeah, I've also eaten guinea pig. I might send Amber a picture of that to put in the video. No, I won't, because it might get this video demonetized. If you're in a guinea pig, you, you don't need to see that, but <laughs> that's a huge tangent. <laughs> the mountain part of the name is, however, accurate, as these guys are found in the mountains. And this frog actually has some more accurate names too, like the white-lipped frog and the giant ditch frog, though neither of those are as fun as mountain chicken. That sounds like a NAF superhero name or something. I am the mountain chicken. <laughs> like, yeah, I might, if I ever become a superhero, I'm gonna call myself the mountain chicken. What powers would I have? I don't know. What powers does someone called the mountain chicken have? Like better peck people to death or something, I don't know. But what about the bear cat? This creature has two animals in its name. So is it actually a bear or is it actually a cat? Well, you guessed it, it's neither. These guys are found across Southeast Asia and their more correct name is Binturong, but that's not as fun as bear cat, is it? The reason it has been dubbed a bear cat is pretty easy to understand just from looking at the things. They do indeed look a bit like a bear and a bit like a cat. The term seems to be an English adaptation of the Chinese Zhang Mao, apologies about pronunciation there, my, my Chinese pronunciation doesn't do great, but this also means bear cat. And funnily enough, this name was actually first applied to a different animal altogether, that being pandas. And this makes an awful lot of sense too, because pandas are pretty cat-like in regards to being bears, and they are actually bears. So it's only half a life for them. Bear cats are actually more related to other small mammals like civets and fossas than either bears or cats. Finally, let's talk about all the creatures with fish in their name that aren't actually fish. To name a few, we have starfish, jellyfish, cuttlefish, various shellfish, crayfish, and even silverfish that don't even live in water. All these fish that aren't fish are relics of the English language's past. There are lots of words we use today for very specific things that were once way more vague in their meaning. For example, apple was once the word for any piece of fruit. And then when we wanted to reference a more specific fruit, we would add a word to apple. That's how we got a term like pineapple in English. This was the case with the term fish too. In the past, we would slap the word fish onto pretty much anything that lived in water. It was only after some time, fish came to mean a more specific kind of sea dweller. You know, the ones with gills and the fins and all that kind of stuff. Though some actually argue that there's no such thing of a fish at all, but that's, that's an argument for another time. But this is how we ended up with so many things that live in the sea, which distinctly aren't fish, being called fish. And in regards to silverfish, they apparently got that name because of the way they move, which is apparently very similar to how fish swim. I mean, I didn't check that because, I don't know, I don't really like little wiggly bugs that kind of freak me out, but I've seen silverfish in Minecraft and they look a bit more fishy, so that's something. It is really odd that we have so many animals named after the wrong animal, isn't it? But you know what? That's not even all of them. Let me know about any other animals named after the wrong animal that I might have missed out on. Also, please suggest a topic down below, which we could cover in next Monday's Name Explain video. It could be about literally anything, and the topic area can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those topics and place them in a poll exclusively for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from that poll will be the topic covered in next Monday's Name Explain video. You can vote in that poll, as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below and by donating just one dollar a month. Thank you. Anyway, that's more than enough for myself. Don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I'm name explain YT. And don't forget to go join the Facebook page, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay all, take care. Take the tree frog, named because it's a tree. It's not a tree, it's a frog. It's a tree that lives in a frog. This was the Latin onomatopoeic work for, onomatopoeic work? 
a dove. And then that got interrupted, interrupted, interrupted. Apple, like how that, like how the kind of sweet, sweet weller, sweller. Let me know about any other, uh, 